This is a great pleasure uh, that you are here with us, a great honor. My name is Grzegorz Velizarowicz, and I am the chair of the International Border Studies Center. And before I deliver my 10-minute talk uh, and introduce our keynote speaker, I would like to give the floor and invite uh, on stage uh, the Deputy Dean of Research and uh, International Cooperation at the uh, Faculty of History, uh, our colleague and the first chair of the International Border Studies Center, Professor Anna Mazurkiewicz. Good morning. On behalf of the Dean of the Faculty of History, uh, Professor Rakadusz Janicki, I would like to welcome you to this uh, beautiful campus of ours, to Gdańsk, the most beautiful city on the planet. If you have not noticed that yet, it's coming. Uh, thank you for making uh, your trip all the way to here. Uh, the program uh, is really packed with most amazing sessions, so I really look forward to um, being a part of it. To begin with, I just want to say very briefly that the International Border Studies Center is a synergy of three faculties. There's Faculty of History that I'm representing, Faculty of Philology, and Faculty of Social Sciences that pulled their best resources, uh, people who are doing migration research, border studies, studies in literature, um, together to have a center that is basically focused on research and promoting our research agenda locally and internationally. This year, the work of the center was taken over by Dr. Grzegorz Velizagovic, who is actually the one whose idea was at the Statuna Sandy at the moment, we were trying to figure out how to pull together resources from the entire university. Had it not been for Grzegorz, the center would have probably never materialized. Grzegorz. He's also the main spiritus movements behind the program of this conference, the idea of this conference. This is not the first edition, but um, the entire program and the list of amazing keynote speakers, the workshops that were the artistic part of the conference, everything is Grzegorz's invitation and doing, and uh, the reason why you're here is all because of him, so I'm really very grateful. And personally, I'm absolutely delighted to be able to be part of the International Border Studies Center. I promise that I'm going to speak for no longer than two minutes. So I, rather than going over what the IBSC is doing, I recommend that you have a look at the newsletter that is featuring what we've done through the last um, two years. This is the issue for 2022, and you can see that there is a black trommel on the cover, and if you're uh, perplexed as to why and uh, what happened, read it, because there is something amazing that happened last year right here. Um, I'm going to leave it at that as a mystery for you to explore and a lot of amazing things to come our way this year. Again, thank you very much for being here. Gregor, the floor is back yours. So welcome to Gdańsk. Uh, and uh, my name, uh, as I said, is Grzegorz Velizarowicz, the chair of the International Border Studies Center. We launched uh, the Border Seminar in 2017, and today we, today we are opening our fourth, the first since the pandemic, and the first in person since 2019. This event would not be possible without the work of a number of individuals and organizations whom I would like to mention up front. Professor Anna Mazurkiewicz, Ross Aldridge, Martin Blaszk and Maciej Rataj have been the core organizers and I want to personally thank you. Um, thank you to the Immigration Museum, to Faculty of Languages and the Andrzej Wajda Film Center. Thank you to our interns and to the administrative and technical staff at UG. Thank you to artists Meza Hickson and Ricardo Daffy for their paintings, which you can see in the program. Thank you, distinguished guests, for making the time to be here with us we have found a community and a thriving discipline. We founded Border Seminar perplexed by the invasion of the border, the wall, on our imaginations, social life, and its spillover on the everyday. We formed an inter interdisciplinary group wanting to illuminate the family of terms, of border terms, from our respective positions. Border Seminar became a forum for dialogue, exchange, experiment, including experimental scholarship. Heeding the Chicanex author Roger Bartra's advice to approach the border tangentially, not in a straightforward way, 
We were also convinced that art could serve as a powerful tool of border research and praxis. Hence, the IBSC has sponsored artistic residencies, workshops, commissions, visiting professorships of artists. And we have one such artist with us today. I would like to acknowledge Jesse Lerner, who uh, is responsible. Thank you, Jesse. Who is responsible for the first week of this conference? He did a workshop, Gdańsk City Symphony, and the results of that workshop, it's a filmmaking workshop, uh, you will be able to see on Friday. Um, what I want to say today is to declare our larger intentions. Writing in 2013, American studies scholars Barbara Tomlinson and George Lipschitz drew attention to the crisis in the academia spurred by the dominant role of neoliberal assumptions like competition, productivity, time crunch, bureaucratization. Today, we find ourselves in a compounded crisis. On the one hand, the neoliberal assumptions have become all but naturalized. On the other, attacks on freedom of inquiry and independence of research are becoming the new normal. Not only in Florida, they are banning books. The Polish Minister of Education not only fantasizes about, but implements the return of censorship. As the Institute of Philosophy and Sociology of the Polish Academy of Sciences has learned, the way to do it is by drying out funding. If this politician is one of our own, a scholar himself, the situation becomes not only grotesque, but dangerous, revealing these self-destructive impulses. I am saying these words weary of their weight. After all, the IBSC's very existence depends on funding. Acknowledging our precariousness and the surreptitious impulse to self-censorship, we nonetheless are hopeful. This is because inspired by El Salvador's Archbishop Oscar Romero's message to accompany the struggle of the poor and by the musical meaning of the term, we think of our work as accompaniment. Tomlinson and Lipset suggest that accompaniment recognizes the essential oneness in the society and the inescapably quintessential nature of scholarship and citizenship. Accompaniment welcomes difference. Its musical connotations are procedural, calling for attention, communication, and cooperation. It means, it means augmenting, accenting, and countering one musical voice with another, saying less so the others can be heard harmonizing or dissonantly. In the society of soloists, accompaniment is undervalued, but Tomlinson and Lipschitz encourage us to adapt it as, quote, a basis of a powerful counterculture inside academia, as well as an important bridge to all the creative, critical, and contemplative thinking that goes on outside it. Tomlinson and Lipschitz say, American studies as accompaniment means American studies as action. Following this model, in our context, we want to think of border studies as accompaniment, as action building bridges, facilitating new modes of thinking. This year's themes is migration narratives and border studies. After Georg Simmel, we understand that border aesthetics can be thought of as imaginings of migration and movement, and that migration may be called the master narrative of the border aesthetics. Hence, our interest in the narratives of migration but also in migrations of narratives and objects. In terms of border studies, we want to evoke Walter Mignolos, Mignolo, who says that the colonial power, a colonial power differential has always rested on the Western pretense to universality. And that to break from the coloniality, we need to recognize the entanglement of several cosmologies connected today in a power differential, that is, of pluriversality. Mignolo uses the figure of the slash to render the entanglement and power differential. He says that, quote, it is a way of thinking and understanding that dwells in this entanglement, in the borders that is needed. Mignolo calls such thinking pluritopical, dwelling in the border, rendered as border thinking, border epistemology, border gnosis. The border gnosis is a model of thinking and praxis which eschews monotopic hermeneutics. It can be rendered as the twilight. Homi Baba explains that, quote, when we look at twilight, we learn three things. One, we learn that the heart 
lines of what we see in daylight that make it easy for us to order daylight disappear. So we begin to see its boundaries in a much more faded way. That fuzziness, fuzziness of twilight allows us to see the intersections of the event with a number of other things that daylight obscured for us. We have to interpret more in twilight. We have to make ourselves part of the act. We have to interpret, we have to project more. But also the thing itself in twilight challenges us to be more aware of how we are projecting onto the event itself. What Baba says of the clarity of daylight can be said equally of darkness. Both states <clears throat> represent a certain obscuring transparency, if you like. Like Baba, Anna Devier Smith's character Twilight Bay in Twilight, 1992, prefers the limbo of twilight. For, quote, in order to me, for me to be a true human being, I cannot forever dwell in darkness. I cannot forever dwell in the idea of identifying with those like me, of understanding only me and mine, end of quote. With these words in mind, we now hope to step into the twilight with you, to engage border gnosis and to dwell on the border, pensando fronterizo. If lectures and panels will stimulate this intellectually, other parts of the program are intended to offer more immersive experiences. Today, come to Dreamscape at 1 p.m., which will take you to a border zone of realities and temporalities, the institutional versus the percussive time. Before that, however, I would like to give floor to my colleague, Ross Aldrich, to introduce our keynote speaker. Thank you very much.